Hello there, my friend. Thank you so much for inviting me into your home. I'm Pastor Laverne Tucker. Welcome to our home. Now today, we have some new guests with us. So happy that Pastor and Mrs. Ken Berry can be with us here in our home. We're glad to be here with you in your home. Thank you, Pastor Tucker. Now, Pastor Ken, Marion, you have been missionaries in Africa and pastoring yes. many churches throughout the United States. Yes. They tell me that you decided to go on retirement. You don't look that old. Oh, I'm <laughs> that old. <laughs> uh, yes, we decided to go on retirement because we have something else we wanted to do for the Lord. What was that? Present this program, the Song of Songs. Oh, it is beautiful. I just saw it, and I told uh, your wife, Mary and I said, I must have that on videotape. And I know that our friends will want to have video cassettes, copies of these. Tell us, how did you get started with this drama of the Song of Solomon or the Song of Psalms? You know, I've read that and I thought, my, that's a pretty love story. But as I saw it depicted by you folks, it was entirely different. How did you get started on it? Well, it's like this. We were missionaries in Africa. And uh, we were having morning worship and decided that we would read the Bible out loud together. And we got over into the Song of Solomon, and, and she asked me some questions. What were those questions, dear? Well, I asked my husband, uh, what is the meaning of this book? And he I, said... Well, you told me. It didn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't seem to make sense when I first read the book, <clears throat> and I wondered why it was in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Many people wonder why that That's book right. is in the Bible. But he told me to look in the commentaries. But the more commentaries I looked in, the more different ideas I found. They didn't agree with each oh, other. Yes. So finally, it seemed to me that the only thing left to do was to do like we should do, and that was to make a cross-reference study. Mm -hmm. So we went to Nairobi and to other places, first looking for information, but the, the best way was to simply trace every part of it as it made reference to other parts of the Bible, trace these words in the original Hebrew. Oh, did you study Hebrew then? No, I didn't study Hebrew, but I used an analytical concordance to oh, make yes. sure that I was getting the right understanding of each one of these words. Mm -hmm. And that took a long time. It took over four months, Isn't six that... hours a day of, of careful well, you research. You really became a research expert then, didn't you? <laughs> well, I wouldn't know that it was expert, but I tried to do a very thorough work. Mm -hmm. And I found the, m some very wonderful things about this book. In the first place, this book is coded. Oh. It is coded in symbolic language. And the same bride that you find in Revelation, and where it says the spirit and the bride say come, that's the same bride that is in the wedding song of the Song of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And Jesus referred to himself in the four gospels as the bridegroom. And he is the bridegroom in this book. There's a beautiful commentary. It's called Christ's Object Lessons. And there it says that in the Song of Songs, we hear Christ speaking to his people, to his bride, his yes. church, Good. and that she answers him there. And taking this cue, I discovered that as the bride makes these various statements, verse after verse, in sequence, in the Song of Solomon, that she is giving various references to happenings to, in her experience or her, um, her life. And so if she is the church, then the, these different happenings make up the history of the church. And so I found that the history of the church, as given in the Song of Solomon, agrees completely with the book of Revelation in the time periods of Revelation That's and even of Daniel. And so then we discovered that it mentions the wonderful themes of the atonement and justification, sanctification, the church in her wilderness experience and the great reformation, the advent movement, the great disappointment, even the great disappointment yes. of 1844. And then it ends on a most thrilling uh, concept that the church 
now in this very time in which we live is just waiting for the final climactic ending of Earth's history where she will be sealed and reflect the image of Jesus fully. Beautiful. And so then, of course, the next thing is the coming of the bridegroom. How many years have you put in researching all this out now? Well, I began in 1948, and it took me about four years to do the research work and a little extra time to get it all together because there were 500 pages of uh, legal size paper, uh, single spaced, of references from the research. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I w had the book into the seminary where they sent it over to the book editors. Mm -hmm. But the problem was that the brethren were busy, and I looked in the writings of, of uh, good counsel, and I found that they said there that if the brethren didn't see light in it, we should lay it aside. So I just laid it aside for 15 years. And then uh, finally, uh, one of the Bible teachers said to me, you should try to put this into pictures. And so in trying to make pictures, I had quite a time because you see, uh, I, I couldn't make overhead transparencies that looked good enough, so finally my husband built a stage and I dressed many, many dolls. Mm -hmm. And these dolls were as characters in the historical scenes of the book. So that's what makes up our video program. Very fine. Well, thank you, Ken, and thank you, Marion. I believe it's time now for us to go to the drama of the Song of Songs. Thank you. 